Today I'm going to be going over how you can use an eGPU to edit on your MacBook. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and if you didn't know, I edit on a MacBook. It's been great for years and I've edited many of my favourite projects on it, but as you can imagine, it isn't the best if I have a load of effects on a layer and I can't get smooth playback, uh, especially like in full resolution, but sometimes even in quarter resolution. I did use a refurbished PC for a bit. It had great graphics, but not as great a CPU, so it made it great for stuff like gaming, but not as good for video editing. And one day I was searching for a solution to this problem and I came across eGPUs. Basically, in simple terms, it's like a mini computer that you put a graphics card into and then you can use it with your laptop. And for my case, I use it with my MacBook. And then with certain programs, you can utilize that GPU and get better performance. Now there are a lot of different options for eGPUs. eGPUs tend to work with computers that support Thunderbolt 3 and have Thunderbolt 3 ports. Now there are many different eGPUs on the market, some of which are pre-built machines such as the Blackmagic Apple uh, eGPU and the pro version of that eGPU which are pre-built with a graphics card inside. The downside of this is that you cannot change the graphics card and once the uh, graphics card becomes outdated you have to sell the entire unit. Although you can just buy yourself an enclosure which although costs a similar price at the time when you need to upgrade you don't need to buy an enclosure again you can just buy a new graphics card and it ends up cheaper in the long run and a lot less hassle. The enclosure I bought was a refurbished Razer Core X Chroma. All the Chroma version really does is it has has some USB ports and an ethernet cable on the back as well as some pretty lights inside. Retail this enclosure is about £400 but if you buy it second hand or refurbished you can get it for a lot cheaper. I'll list some other enclosure options in the description if you want to go and have a look at different price points. And paired with that enclosure I have the AMD RX 580 which is the same card that is used in the Blackmagic GPU except that I can upgrade it when I want to. I tried to get hold of a Vega 64 graphics card but apparently they're impossible to get in the UK at the moment but I've managed to find an RX 580 but so far it's worked really well in Premiere which is my main editing uh, program. My MacBook is the lowest model from 2017 so it's 13 inch with an i5 and uh, integrated graphics so you can imagine utilizing an eGPU really helped with that and I can now like preview video at full resolution and not get any lag especially with a couple of effects on there. From what I've heard from all the research I've done online which is hours and hours and hours of it you can expect really good results with programs like DaVinci Resolve and uh, Final Cut Pro and Adobe only recently came out with support for multiple GPUs in Premiere which if they hadn't would have turned me off of getting one. The same can't be said about After Effects though, which I was very surprised to find out that After Effects barely uses the GPU at all and it tends to do everything on the CPU. So I didn't see any increase in speed in After Effects. So if your main software is After Effects, then I probably wouldn't recommend getting one of these. But for what I'm using it for in Premiere, it really works well. The downsides to using one on a MacBook are there are a very select few cards that Apple officially supports and they're all AMD. You cannot officially use a NVIDIA card with uh, your MacBook. From what I understand there are ways of getting around that but I wouldn't suggest it as it's not what Apple recommends. So AMD cards seem to be the way to go and uh, setup should have been fairly simple when I got the enclosure but due to buying it refurbished the Thunderbolt cable that came with it was a bit dodgy so I thought that my computer wasn't accepting the uh, GPU and I spent quite a lot of time trying to fix it but then I realized I was an idiot and it was just the cable was broken. So I'm using another cable and it works perfectly. So you get this little icon in the top that will appear and it will show what card you have. And the advantage of having USB ports on my enclosure means that I literally need one lead for everything, which I think is really cool. I haven't tested it, but I have heard from other people that you'll get better performance by just using the GPU by itself. But I haven't really experienced any major problems and it makes everything look very minimal. If you're looking to use a GPU to game on your Mac and thinking of using it through Windows using Boot Camp, for those who don't know on Macs you can install a second operating system be it Windows through Bootcamp. What I said earlier about AMD cards from my research online it turns out it's the opposite and NVIDIA cards are basically plug and play when you're on Windows whereas AMD cards require a bit of tinkering but if that's what you want to do I encourage you to do your own research and there will be some links in the description to videos about the subject. In terms of sound and how much sound the fans make it is noisier than my MacBook but isn't as noisy as the impression I got from people online. Honestly it's bearable for me and I don't think it's that big of an issue. If you found this helpful please go down there and leave a like it really helps with the algorithm and if you have any questions I'll do my best to answer them. I'm not an 
expert, but I'm just going off of my experience and a fair bit of research online, so I'll do my best to answer your queries. If you're new to the channel, hit subscribe for everything video editing, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.